So now let's take a look at the different payload generation options that are available for the Badger and what the payload profiler or how they look like. When you create a new listener and light click on that specific listener, you have two different options here, one for the X64 as well as for the X86. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, the payloads for all the different types that we have. First, I'll create the hex shellcode payload and I'll save it here. You can see that it has been saved to my payload directory in my documents path. I will also create the bin file, which is nothing but a binary blob of your raw shell code. I'll create an exe. I'll tell you which are the different scenarios in which you can use almost all of them and how you can use them along with the different command line arguments that you might want to use whenever you are generating uh, any specific uh, payload that you want. Over here, you can type anything. By default, remember that it will ask you for a service name and a description. If you don't type anything here, however, it will use the description that has been specified over here when you click on the specific part. If you want to change how this looks like, you can go to the C4 profiler, click on the PSExec config, and add a new configuration here as well so that that uses that. For the time being, I will just use this itself, the default one that is available. Make sure to change it uh, whenever you're creating a service. I'll just click on OK. OK, I'll save it here. And finally, the PS1 option, that's my PowerShell. And perfect. So if I go to my payloads directory, you can see all the payloads that are available. We'll first take a look at the what the exactly is the content for the text file. So if I just click on more, you would see that it's raw shellcode. Now this is something that I developed because I did not always want to perform an XXD operation on my code and on my bin file, and I uh, so that I can go ahead and convert that to a specific shellcode format and use that in my C code or any other code that I want. So this is nothing but your raw shellcode itself in hex format. If you don't want it to be in a hex format, sometimes you might want it to be in a raw blob format itself. Then you have it in the binary format, which if you specify um, more over there, you will see all the garbage content because this is nothing but your hex shell code in raw byte code. So in order to take a look at that, you would have to type xxd space hyphen i badger underscore x64.bin and I'll type more. And you would see the same opcodes that you were seeing earlier within the badger.ext file that we had earlier. There's nothing but the uh, x 60 replace the hex content of your bin file, which is nothing but your raw opcode. You have a DLL file, which can be run via run DLL32. You have an executable, which can be run by double click, a PowerShell file, which can be directly executed, and a service file. You cannot execute this directly, but you will have to create a service and it can only be executed by your service control manager. Currently, whenever you execute a service uh, x64, it will, uh, uh, okay, this version that we created right now, all of these are HTTP payloads. None of these are SMB payloads, just remember that. If you want to create an SMB payload, however, you would have to go back to Retail War Room, click on C4 Profiler, click on the Payload Profiler option that you have. And over here, as you can see, we only have a single uh, pay payload profiler. This is by default created whenever you create a new listener here. So if you want to add more HTTP uh, profiles, you can click on the Add Profile. Right now, we are more concerned with this SMB as well as a TCP payload. So I'll select on TCP and I will have to add a specific profile before I start developing payloads for anything. I can type any name over here. For example, I'll type main underscore SMB. I would have to type a named pipe. So pipes are uh, something uh, that can be used to communicate uh, between uh, two different systems, two different processes. Uh, or any uh, other uh, way you want to say, redirect a specific output to something else, you can use a name pipe for that. Windows has concepts for anonymous pipes as well as named pipes. Anonymous pipes do not have any privilege support, whereas in case of name pipes, they support different types of privileges. And depending upon what privilege you have, you may or may not be able to con connect or read the data from a named pipe. So name pipe um, uh, is connected over SMB, over your port 445. You do not need any administrative privileges to run this because whenever you start a name pipe, that name pipe will request the kernel to uh, start, uh, start up a listener on this port port 445. And the port 445 listens for all types of your name pipe connections depending upon the name that you have provided. So whenever you specify a name pipe, make sure that whatever name pipe you are using, it is unique to your host. 
and there are no similar name pipes available on your system at that point of time because there's, if there is already a name pipe running with the exact same name that you're typing it out here then uh, you won't be able to uh, connect back to this name pipe because when you try to connect to, to this name pipe that you've typed out over here it would eventually connect back to the original name pipe that was already running on the host so it's always important to have a unique name pipe so that uh, the current running instance is only able to connect to this specific part and not to the previous part that was already running on your host over here i'll just type uh, let's say something like my named pipe don't use this when you're doing any kind of engagement this is just for the demo in a real life scenario you would try to simulate or you would try to uh, spoof the name pipe to something that looks really legitimate by taking a look at what existing name pipes are already there on your host and that can be done by simply using something like get hyphen child item command uh, from the powershell as well and finally c2 auth remember that whatever c2 auth you specify here the payload whenever you start your smb payload be it either a service or digit executable or something else it will start listening on the name pipe that you provided and when you try to connect to this name pipe from your http badger or any other badger that you have the smb payload that you have here it will send this authentication via your pivoted or your main badger that you have and it would send that back to your listener so it is very important that your listener where you, the eventually your smb payload would connect back to has the same password that is configured for your listener if you don't have that then you won't be able to authenticate in such case so always remember that you are able to, um, to use the same authentication over here and all the data that would be sent will be encrypted within between the badges either beat either http smb or even tcp as well so over here our password is currently abcd at one two three so i'll just add that and right now if i want to create let's say a new uh, let's say a payload for smb i can just select it i can specify whether x86 or x64 I can specify a hex bin exe or anything else. I'll just create a exe for the time being. I will click on generate, go to my documents directory, payloads. I will save it here. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, there is no uh, option to change the naming convention here. So it overwrote my existing payload. So I should probably uh, generate a payload for my HTTP under a different name. Let's say underscore HTTPS okay and save it here because it overrode the existing payload that was there under the same name and similarly i'll go to payload profiler i'll click on add profile and I'll create a tcp profile as well i'll name it as main underscore tcp you can name it anything that you want this will be the ip address where your payload would connect back to remember that tcp payloads do not connect back to your server they are your pivot uh, connections which simply mean that the uh, whatever connections that you use for smb or tcp they are going to be pivoted via some other badger which will eventually be pivoted via your http badger itself so whenever you whatever ip you type over here that would be the ip address where your tcp connection would connect back to so if you are using https badger you might have to start a listener on that https badger on a given ip address and that ip address would be where this tcp listener would connect back to we'll take a look at this host later on when we create this part because right now we don't even know what is going to be the IP of our host and we are not going to add anything here. So we have our payloads created here. Let's take a look at all of them. As you can see, we have all the payloads and in the next video, we'll start executing the payloads and take a look at how we can execute different commands and connect back to our SMB payload as well.